Hi! In this video I'm going to introduce you to float and double. Both float and double are primitive types that represent floating point numbers. Double has a size of 8 bytes, while float is half the size. They represent the double precision and single precision floating point numbers from the IEEE 754 standard. Both have a very large range, but the range of double is even vastly larger than the range of float. The default value is zero. Notice the suffix f and d respectively. When you have a literal that is a number with a decimal point, Java interprets it as a double. Here are more examples of floating point literals in Java. Once again notice the suffix f every time you have a floating point literal of type float it has to be declared as such explicitly. Here I have numbers with decimal points, they are considered doubles. I can also use my suffix d. Double is the default choice for decimal values. Float is used if you need to save memory, for example, if you have a very large array. There's one caveat I want you to be aware of. Do not use double or float when precise values are needed. Especially, do not use double or float when you're dealing with money. For such situations, big decimal should be used. Why shouldn't we use double or float when we need precise values? And double and float have a very large range, but there are many numbers that cannot be represented precisely. Let's look at float and integer. Float has a size of 4 bytes. Integer has a size of 4 bytes. But float has a vastly larger range than integer, which only goes from minus 2.15 billion to plus 2.15 billion. Many numbers within the range of a float or double cannot be represented precisely. Do not use them to represent money. Here is a code segment to look at. Let's say you have a variable called total of type double and you are assigning 5.6 plus 5.8. So looking at that, you might know already this is going to be 11.4. We're going to print out the total. Now when we run the program, the result is 11.399999. You can see close, but not the same. Close, but not close enough to be acceptable when you deal with money or other values that have to be very precise. The fact that many numbers cannot be represented precisely has interesting implications. Imagine a very small number. Smaller than that. Smaller. Smaller. Much smaller. You get the idea. If you keep adding more and more zeros, my number gets smaller and smaller. And if you add enough zeros, at one point the number is so small that a super small number can no longer be distinguished from the actual zero. Now what would happen if you try to divide by such a super small number? One possibility would be to just say, too bad, the number is too small, you can't divide by zero. Or the other way, that they say, well, chances are, if I have a number that looks like a zero, it is really a very, very, very small number, and I want to allow division by it. The way this is solved in Java is the second route. Java allows division by zero for floating point numbers, not for whole numbers. If you try to divide an integer by zero, you get an exception. If you divide 4.5 by zero, you get infinity. Now what happens if you divide zero, the double zero, by zero? That would be NAN. This is a Java constant. It stands for not a number. Same is true 
if you try to divide infinity by infinity, once again, the result is n a n, not a number. Last but not least, I want to show you how you can read and write floating point numbers. If you need to read in a floating point number, let's say from the keyboard or from some other stream, you can use a scanner. And the scanner provides a method next float for a float and next double for a double. If you want to write a floating point number and you need a format specifier in a format string, percent %f will print out a floating point number. This can be used both for float and for double. Many times programmers like to restrict the number of digits after the decimal point. You can do that by adding a point number here. So if this is point 0.1, the number is going to be rounded to one digit after the decimal point. If I would have, for example, point 0.3, my number is going to be rounded and only three digits are going to be displayed. One thing I want to point out is that format specifiers only affect the formatting of the number. They do not affect the variable itself. So if my variable has, let's say, five digits after the decimal point, the value of the variable is going to be rounded to three digits and only three digits are going to be displayed. However, the variable itself remains unchanged. Let's have a look at a quick code example. I'm going to read in two numbers from the user, a double and a float, and I'm going to print them with a format specifier, first just using %f and then restricting the number of digits after the decimal point. I start by creating an import statement. If you want to use a scanner, you need to import Java Util Scanner. I'm going to declare a scanner, I name it input, and I base it on system in. This is my standard input stream that reads from the keyboard. I'm going to prompt a user to enter number one, and I'm going to read in the number one using next double because my number one is declared as a double. I'm going to prompt the user again to enter number two, and this time I'm going to read it in using the method next float because I'm declaring my number two as a float. Here I'm going to print both numbers using percent %f, so there's no restriction on the number of digits after my decimal point. I'm going to compile and run. Number one, that is 1.234. Number two is 9.876. And I would get some output that even has some zeros added at the end. So if I don't like this, I could say, well, I want only two decimal points displayed. And just to show you that my original number is still intact, I'm going to print my original number two with a percent f so we can see that my variable remained unchanged. Once again I'm going to enter the same numbers 1.234 and 9.876 and you can see um, my output is rounded, 4 is rounding down to 3, 6 is rounding up to an 8 and my original number is still what it used to be before.